What's going on AFL Fantasy Freak fam? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new around here, I'm Jacob, aka the AFL Fantasy Freak. Absolute smashed it this round, guys. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I went, my overall round eight review, how my trades went, how I scored, where I'm ranked, all that good stuff. And I'll give you a little bit of an insight into what I'm planning to do over the next couple of weeks leading up into the buys. Enjoy the video, guys. Quickly before I jump into the video guys, I just wanted to let you know that I'll be running a competition so the instructions on how to enter that will be at the end of the video so stay tuned for that. In a week where there was plenty of big scores, I wasn't truly convinced of how well I was going up until the last game of the round. I'd managed to poll the score of 2250 which was pretty respectable this week. I managed to move up about 700 spots, so I'm currently sitting at 485 in rank, which I'm super stoked with. My team's in a healthy position. My cash generation is limited at the moment, which is something that I will be fixing up over the next couple of weeks going up into the buys. As for my trades this week, I made a little bit of a mistake. If you guys had seen my trade guide, and my trade talk video during last week, you would have known that I was pretty bullish on Aaron Hall. I actually traded Hall in this week and made him my VC. So I got 266 points there on debut. I traded him in for James Rowe, and I also traded Matt Flynn for Riley Collier Dawkins. Fantastic trades, follows the principle which I preach, which is one up, one down. The error in which I made was trading James Rowe. As a Heath Chapman owner, I was pretty busy during the week, so I didn't get to catch all the news, and I didn't think his injury was as bad as what it is. So I held Chapman in hopes that he would be back for next week. It turns out that he's out for the season, and I've traded James Rowe instead. James Rowe's a guy that's going to be there. He's going to play, so... We'll see how much that limits me or hinders me going into the buys as any bench guy you can have that plays is absolutely crucial. So essentially, I've now given myself an extra trade that I have to do. It's not the end of the world, but it is a downside and it is a mistake on my behalf. You guys can see my team from last week, how I scored, what it's looking like, etc., a couple of standouts this week for me. Obviously, Aaron Hall VC on debut. Sam Doherty was phenomenal with 123. Just keeps getting it done. He was poor the week before with, with a 77 odd. But he's that top premium in, in defense, which is what you want. He looks like he's a top six guy. As I'm trying to get rid of round 12 buyers players, I was looking at potentially moving Oleg Markov on, but... With 102 on the weekend, he reminded me why he's in my side and he's probably going to stay there for a couple weeks longer now. And the last guy that I was super impressed with was Darcy Parrish. He just keeps getting it done. I started with him this year, so he's been a phenomenal pick for me. A score of 117 means that the cash generation is just going to keep ticking and during the buys, he's going to be at a nice healthy price to potentially sideways or upgrade to one of those big uber premium guys like a Clayton Oliver, for example. On the flip side, I did score 2250, so there weren't many negatives for me this week. Andrew Brayshaw, while he scored 83 and is a bit down on what I expected, he did have close to 40 points in the last quarter, which really saved his score. It did look like he was in for a 50 or 60 odd at one stage. So while he was a little bit down, I'm not too disappointed with the outcome. Riley O'Brien, on the other hand, huge issue. I'm not sure what to do with him. 
He's really slow. He doesn't do much around the ground. His markings down. If it wasn't for his tackles on the weekend, he would have scored 40 or 50 odd again. Grundy and Gorn are the clear top two. And Gorn is at a nice cheap price now to bring in if you don't have him. In my position and what I need to do and to get my team ready for the buyers, I'm going to have to hold O'Brien for a while. And I'm just going to hope and pray that he comes good and can try and pump out 90 plus scores. But at this stage, I'm not too stoked owning him. As for the vision and what I'm looking to do with my side, I have a few round 12 guys that I need to get rid of up to the buyers. And I'll be looking to follow my strategy of doing a one down, a one up approach, probably up until around round 11, where I'll look at trying to build up some cash, build up a bank so that I can target some round 12 premiums in round 13. So round 11, round 12, I'll focus on fixing some rookies up, getting a bit of cash in the bank. But up until then, I'll be looking to upgrade my team as much as possible, get points on field, all that stuff. I'll be talking about a little bit of trade strategy and what I'm looking to do in my buy strategy video, which will be dropping in the next couple of days, guys. Just a quick video today, just wanted to let you guys know how I went over the weekend, where I'm sitting. As I promised at the start of the video, I'm running a competition, so if you want to be part of the competition, head over to my Instagram page, you'll see the competition post there. The instructions to enter the competition will be outlined on the post. Essentially, I'll be picking a couple people's teams to review, I'll be dissecting what I like about the teams, what they should be doing, that sort of thing, how to get their team in a good position going up to the buy. This is valuable, important information. So the first step to enter the competition is to subscribe to the channel on my YouTube. The next couple steps will be outlined on the post on Instagram. The link to that is in the description of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below how you scored this week, how your trades went, what sort of trades you're looking at potentially doing over the next week or couple weeks. Like the video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you want more AFL fantasy content. And until next time, guys, keep climbing up the ranks. Look, I'm about my plaid, bitch. I'm decked up on blue bills. And I won't stop until the cash pit look like fall leaves in a bag fill. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bullshit. Quit to save my peace, I'm so after school.